Okay guys, so I just wanted to create this quick little video with me and my friend Charlie here in the corner. Um, just to reiterate that this first video you're watching here is designed to teach you the ropes about the specific rhythms. And the second video that I just made, um, I have a link in the info of the video that you're watching, uh, is designed to test you on those rhythms. So uh, again, if you have any issues with either of these videos, always re revert back to the first video I made that talks about the electrical physiology of the heart. Um, if you understand that video, you'll be able to understand these rhythms no problem. So always let me know if you have a question. Uh, enjoy these videos. Alright YouTube, well welcome back um, to another one of my uh, cardiology videos um, about the heart. Uh, and this is a second video um, after my first video that I talked about where we went over the basic electrophysiology of the heart. Um, and I said I was going to get around to doing some videos where we talked about uh, different rhythms that the heart can display um, and how those would be interpreted and so that's what we're going to do today I apologize it's taken so long uh, medical school has completely consumed my life but uh, never or nonetheless I guess we are here right now and we're ready to go do some rhythm so um, before you jump into this video make sure you have watched the other video uh, the link is posted in the info if you watch my other video um, it'll really help you understand um, what's going on here. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, so um, give her a shot and uh, let's see what we can do here. So um, as you can see up here, um, this is our normal sinus rhythm. So we look, uh, we have a P wave, which is a normal height, and the PR interval is okay. Then we have our QRS, and then we have a T wave, so the QRS is the ventricles depolarizing. T wave is the uh, repolarization of the ventricles. So everything looks good um, and this is supposed to look good. This is a normal sinus rhythm. So um, it looks kind of weird when you let it scroll by and that's just because of the way the um, software works. So um, you can see up here we have our heart rate which is 72 beats a minute. Um, that's normal. Um, and then each one of these little squares here um, can be used just like if it was on a EKG 12 lead printout that you would see. Um, so let us get started. We'll go and start with the first pathologic um, rhythm. Um, so first off we're just going to start with something easy. So we're going to look at, this is a sinus bradycardia. So what is a sinus bradycardia? Well it's just essentially when your heart rate is a normal sinus rhythm but it is a rate less than 50 beats per minute. Um, this isn't necessarily pathological. Uh, it can be normal in athletes um, or people who have just a normal low resting heart rate. Um, it's only pathological when it causes symptoms such as lightheadedness, um, passing out, uh, things of that nature. So um, you can also have sinus bradycardia caused by um, intense vagal stimulation. So you can do a vagal rub on your uh, carotid sinus to get some uh, vagal stimulation. But um, it's typically non-pathological, um, but you know it is something to watch out for. So to contradict this, we're going to go and we're going to look at sinus tachycardia. So um, this is a typically, it's just it's a fast heart rate. It's a normal sinus rhythm. Um, it's typically caused by increased sympathetic stimulation. Um, so you can have that from pain, fever, increased oxygen demand, uh, hypovolemia, hypovolemia, so if you're dehydrated. Um, if you note up here, we have a narrow QRS complex. Um, and the rate is typically below 150 beats a minute, um, but greater than 100. Um, let's see here. So now we're going to go and we will pick, um, let's give you one of these here. This is going to be a fun one. So what do you think is going on with this rhythm? So if we go up here and we look, we see we have these QRS complexes, right? Or they're not very well. I guess the main thing you want to do when you're looking at an EKG strip is you want to look for three things. A, do you have a? Let me go back to sinus rhythm. We'll come back to this one. Okay, so look for three things. A, do we have a P wave followed by a QRS wave in every single instance? And that's correct. We do in this situation. The next thing you want to look at are the P waves and QRS complexes evenly spaced. So in this situation, it looks like they're spaced. So we go one, two, three, four squares. So they're about four squares, I guess you could say. And you come over here, count one, two, three, four. They're good, one, two, three, four. That's fine with me. Um, you can also use these little squares to calculate the heart rate. And so to do that, you want to go from a QRS to QRS. 
um, and you count each square. Um, so we're going to go 300, 150, 100, 75. So this is a little under 75, and we see up here that this is at 72. So um, the way I did that is you count down from 300. Each square is equal to 300. So um, let's even that out here. There we go. 300, 150, 100, 75. So this is around 75 beats per minute. Now if this one was moved um, over here to the left, then our heart rate would be 300, 150, 100 beats a minute. If it was moved from here to here, it would be 300, 150, 175, 60. So it would be 60 beats per minute. So it's just a quick way you can um, look at your EKG rhythm and uh, figure out your uh, uh, heart rate. So now let's go back to this other one we had going on here. So um, do we have P waves that we can see? Well, I don't see any P waves. There are no P waves. Are there QRS waves following P waves? Well, we don't have P waves, so the QRSs are kind of random, right? And if we look here at the baseline or the equilibrium um, electrical potential, there is no baseline. It's just all over the place. It's squiggly. It's jumping everywhere. Um, and so that is indicative of the atria just going crazy. They're fluttering, fibrillating. fibrillating. Um, this is actually an atrial fibrillation, so we're not going to get into the atrial flutter um, in this video. But yeah, this is AFib, um, and it's characterized by crazy little squiggly lines here on your equilateral or your equal potential um, electrical line um, followed by random QRS complexes. Um, it's a pretty straightforward thing. People, it can be um, non-pathologic. Typically people are treated with, um, you put them on a blood thinner or anticoagulant. Um, the only thing that you can have that can make it pathologic um, you don't have your atrial kick, which is where your atria contract to force that blood into the ventricles. Um, and the reason why I put them on the anticoagulant is because since the atria aren't contracting, you have the risk for um, stagnant blood, so you can develop clots. Um, so that's not what we want. So now let's look at um, this type of rhythm. So we did what we did last time we're going to look okay is the p wave in front of a qrs in all times yes that's correct q waves evenly spaced well let's see 300 150 175 300 150 175 so yeah they look pretty evenly spaced at around 75 beats per minute and that's confirmed with our number up here uh, so now the next thing we're going to look at is um, are there any irregularities in the rhythm i don't see any irregularities just you know, it looks like a pretty straightforward rhythm. However, when we go in here and we look at our P wave to R wave, our PR interval, this is elongated. Okay, so this little first bump here is the P wave, and then we have our Q, R, S, and then our little T wave. Okay, the distance from this P wave to this R wave is greater than 0.2 seconds. Okay, and I can tell that because each one of these little squares is equal to 0.2 seconds, essentially. Um, and so, you're able to tell that because the distance from the P wave to the R wave is elongated, this is a first degree AV block. Um, and so what this is, is essentially you're having a delay in the electrical conductivity through the AV node. So it just takes longer for the atria to send their signal, or for, excuse me, the SA node to send its signal through the atria into the AV node and then down into the ventricles. So there's a delay in that AV node. Um, so it can be pathological, um, but we're not going to get into the treatment stuff in this video. So that's what it looks like. Um, it can be pretty benign. Um, you won't catch it if you don't look for it. So um, be sure to look at that one. Now we're going to move into this rhythm. I'll let it play for a little bit. So um, what do you notice? Are the QRS waves and P waves, are they equal? Are they equally spaced? Are they normal? Do they have any irregularities? Um, is there a P wave in front of every QRS wave? And so just quickly looking here, yeah, it looks like there's a P wave in front of every QRS wave. However, there is no QRS complex following this P wave right here. This is a T wave, and here's a P wave, and there is no QRS wave here. So that's a problem. Um, now, when you let this play here, you see that the um, P waves are kind of randomly firing, and sometimes they don't have a QRS and sometimes they do and so if you look here let me let this play here right here here's our P wave and there's a very short distance to this QRS complex 
here's our second P wave, and the distance gets longer. Here's the third P wave, the distance gets even longer, and the fourth P wave, the distance is super long. We get to the fifth P wave, and it drops the QRS complex completely. Because what's happening here is, again, you're having a delay of electrical conductivity through that AV node, um, and the delay is so long that you're actually hitting the cells when they're in their refractory phase, so they're not able to conduct an electrical impulse. Um, so you just have an inability of that QRS to even fire. Um, so this is a second degree AV block type one. Okay, there's also a type two, which is seen here. So in a type two, the difference is, let's let that clear off. There we go. Um, here in the type two, we can have multiple P waves that are firing without the QRS complex firing. So that's the key characteristic, is you have one or more QRS complexes being dropped um, with the PR intervals. And so the thing about the PR intervals in a type two AV, or a second degree type two AV block is the PR intervals don't change. So you see how they're all evenly spaced, P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS. They're evenly spaced. When we go to a second degree type one, they get longer. P, QRS is short, P, QRS is long, P, QRS is even longer, okay? So this is a type one, it's second degree AV block type one, and this is a second degree AV block type two. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the third type of AD, AV block. So this is, I think, the easiest to diagnose. This essentially is where your P waves are not having any influence on QRS complexes whatsoever. They're just randomly firing, and then you're having random QRS firings. Um, that's pretty explanatory. I mean, it, you can see it here. There is absolutely no pattern that's being followed. It's just completely random. So. Um, that's all there is for that one. Oh, almost done. We've got a couple more here to go through. Um, so the next one we're going to look at is called a junctional rhythm. And this is where the rhythm um, does not start in the SA node, but it actually starts from the AV node um, or the AV junction. And so the pacemaker rate in the AV junction is anywhere from 40 to 60 beats per minute. Um, and so when we're looking at a lead two here, um, when you have a lead two junctional rhythm, you have inverted or absent P waves. Because remember my other video, um, when you're looking at the heart, if the heart has the electrical impulse going down and away from the SA node, you're going to have a positive spike, right? And in this video or in this situation, if we have the impulse starting in the middle of the heart and going up and going down, we're going to have an inverted P wave, but we're going to have a normal QRS wave because the QRS wave is still conducting the electrical impulse the right, it's like the right direction, but the P wave or the atria, which are represented by the P waves, are not conducting it correctly. They're conducting it backwards. So if it's backwards, you're going to have an inverted P wave, but we don't have P waves in this situation. That's normal. Um, it just it really depends on your patient in that situation. So, um, yeah, this is a junctional rhythm. All right, now let's go to uh, about this one. <clears throat> so this is also a normal sinus rhythm, which is noted by uh, P, Q, R, S, T. All of them are equally spaced. Um, there's no random, you know, uh, depolarizations in between them except for right over here. So we have a P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, and then we just have this random spike with an inverted repolarization. So this is telling you, I guess what this is called is this is a PVC or premature ventricular contraction. Um, these can be pathologic. Um, you don't want to have a PVC um, because these things can turn into VFib very, very quickly um, if they happen at the right time because you can get a uh, re-entry rhythm uh, or a re-entry phenomenon as people will call it also. Um, so essentially this is just a ectopic or a specific part of the heart that is depolarizing that's not supposed to depolarize. And when it depolarizes, it sends its signals in all directions 
um, which can, you know, it'll depolarize all of the cardiac muscle. That's not good. Um, just make sure you recognize these. This is a big red flag. Okay, uh, we have two more. So this is a bad rhythm. Okay, this is awful. You never want to see this. This is called VTAC. Um, the way you characterize it, the way you look at it, is if you imagine um, this was a saw. It looks kind of like a saw blade, doesn't it? Like you cut down a tree with. Um, nice and evenly spaced. Uh, little sharp points. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to have a blade like this come to my arm. Um, and that's the characteristic feature. This is VTAC. Um, so this will kill you because the heart's beating so fast it does not have time to fill up with blood to pump. So it's essentially kind of like you're pumping nothing at all. It's just beating way too fast. Um, so this can be caused by, uh, remember the PVC we just looked at a second ago? When you have a PVC that uh, happens on top of a T wave, so the repolarization of the ventricles, um, then you can have this phenomenon occur and this will kill you unless it's corrected. So, um, but again, we're not going to get into the treatments right now. Next thing, um, this is also deadly, and this is VFib. This is just random lines of electrical activity. Um, the heart is essentially quivering like a bag of worms. There is no coordinated um, contraction. There is no cardiac output, um, and um, this needs to be cured um, with either successful defibrillation um, or uh, other pharmacological treatments, which again, we won't get into. So um, those are the main rhythms that you should be familiar, excuse me, should be familiar with. Um, as a bonus rhythm, I'll give you this one and I want you to tell me whether or not you can get it. I'll let you look at it for a second. I'll pause it here for you. So what this is, is this is normal um, but this is from electrical pacing of the ventricles. So when you have a pacemaker or if you have somebody that is in the emergency room and you can do cardio pacing, which is where you're applying an electrical stimulus at a specific rate to sort of stimulate the heart artificially, um, this is what the rhythm will look like in some situations. So this little line right here looks like a little miniature QRS. This is actually the electrical impulse provided by the machine stimulating the heart to contract and then this is stimulating the heart to contract excuse me and this ridge here depolarization repolarization this is actually the ventricle um, that's depolarizing so that's what the QRS complex looks like in a paced rhythm um, from a lead to uh, it's not always going to look like this but this is a good example of one so if you see a really really sharp demarcation here in a line um, the human body cannot uh, conduct electricity this fast to have this straight up and down of a line. Um, if you ever see this, think that this is artificially induced by some means. So um, I hope that this video has helped you uh, in some ways. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message or leave a comment. And uh, if there's any other videos you want me to do, um, please let me know and uh, I will try my best to uh, put those out there for you. Thanks.